Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. And today I'm gonna to show you the first 10 settings I change on my new Samsung phone. So I just got the Galaxy Note 9. I've already done my smart switch transfer, but now I'm gonna go in and adjust some of the specifics that I want my phone to be able to do so that just overall, it's gonna be a much better experience. Now these features will work on many of the new Samsung phones. I have the Galaxy Note 9 today, but this should work all the way back to uh, Galaxy S7s with Android Oreo. So the first thing that I'm going to do is head into the notification bar right here, and I'm gonna pull it down a second time. And then right here on the brightness setting, so I really like to have the option to quickly control the brightness right here. So if I go down and then I click this little arrow or drop down, I then have this option to choose auto brightness or show controls on top. So when you select show controls on top, you select done, now when you pull down the notification tray, there you can see that the brightness setting is right there. So I really like this because I'm always changing my brightness. I don't really like to use auto brightness. It does save your battery life, but sometimes it's just easier to control exactly where my brightness is. So if I want it at this level all the time to save my battery, I can do that. So that's the first setting, pretty simple there, but that is how you can quickly adjust the brightness settings. Now, have you ever been watching something, whether it be online, and you change the volume and it adjusts your ringtone and not the volume of the video? Well, now there is a setting where you can adjust that. So if you want to go into the settings, you can either use the settings application, or you can actually just pull down the notification tray and then go into the settings right there. And then we're gonna go to sound and vibration. And now here we have the use volume keys for media. So typically, I'm always having my volume all the way down. So if I click the volume here, you can see now that it's changing the media volume. So if I was playing music or watching a video, it's actually gonna change that volume. If I press the volume down again and select the drop down here, now I can go in and change my ringtone. So if I want my ringtone all the way up or down, here's my media controls, here's my notifications. So if you get a text or something, that's how loud that will be. So here you have the system volume, down here you have the Bixby volume, and then down here you have use volume keys for media. So you could quickly turn that off right there. The next setting is adjusting your Wi-Fi settings. So if I go into the settings here and I go into connections and then I go into Wi-Fi, I'm gonna select advanced. Now, whenever you get a new phone, you're starting to go new places, it will keep letting you know that, hey, there's a Wi-Fi network nearby, do you wanna to connect to it? For the most part, I never want to do that. So right here you have this network notification option and that's what's causing it to let you know there's networks nearby. So I turn that off. That actually will save battery because it's not constantly searching for new Wi-Fi networks. And then up here you actually have a few more Wi-Fi options. So let's say you're on a Wi-Fi that's not doing very good. You could have this setting turned on where it will actually switch to your mobile data to use data instead of the Wi-Fi. So it will automatically change between the two. Here you can have the Wi-Fi automatically turn on in places that you frequently go. So it will track the GPS of certain Wi-Fi's and then when you get there, it would turn on the Wi-Fi. And then here you have Wi-Fi power saving mode. So I usually don't turn that on. Sometimes I have these two turned on right there. So that is how you can quickly adjust the Wi-Fi settings. A cool tip is when you pull down this and go to the quick settings, you can actually just hold down on the Wi-Fi there and it will go into your Wi-Fi settings and then I can select advanced and change all those settings right there. Now the next setting is adjusting the screen resolution of your device. So here if we go into display, down here we have screen resolution. So by default, it is only set at 1080p, but the phone is actually capable of going up to 1440p. So when you change the resolution, this will affect battery. So quickly, let's go to the 720p. So this is the lowest resolution that you can get on the phone. So that's how the 720p looks, really not a problem, very crisp and clear. Now let's try the 1080p option. And you'll notice that when you change the resolution, some of the text changes in size and some of the other applications change. So there you can see the 1080p. And then last, let's go up to the 1440p. So this should be the most crispy out of all of the resolutions. Here, let's go back to the home screen. You can see how it looks. So not too much change to the eye, but make sure you select this high quality if you are looking for the most crispy screen. Now with that setting, I also like to go back and go into the font and screen zoom. 
Now with the font and screen zoom, you can actually adjust how large items show up on the screen. So here you can kind of see examples of what text would look like, as well as what the settings would look like. So right now we are on screen zoom small. So if I go to medium, it's going to increase the size of all of the words on screen. So there you can see the texting is bigger. And if we go to large, it makes them really big. So maybe that's a little easier to see. So let's go back to small. And then down here we have font size. So I could change the font size to tiny, or I can go all the way up to huge. So even if I'm on the large setting, still you can have things show up tiny and then up to huge. So that just depends on how you want to use the phone. So let's keep it at large and the medium there. Here you can change your font style if you want, but I'm going to select done. And now you can see that our settings and display menu is much bigger. So if I go back to the home screen, uh, it shouldn't be too much change here. You can adjust this so that they show up a little bit bigger. So that is how you can change your screen resolution and adjust your font screen and zoom. So I typically like it here on the small setting and I like the text there in the middle. Now the next setting has to do with when you are texting or using the keyboard. So typically if you want to do a voice message or you want to do voice to text, hi, how are you doing today? So there it took my voice and put it in the message box there. But this system that it's using right here is the Samsung voice to text option. Most people prefer to use the Google voice to text. So to change that setting, go into the settings of your phone, and then we are going to go down to general management, go to language and input, go to on-screen keyboard, and then here we're going to select manage keyboards, and then right here we have Samsung voice input, and we're going to turn that off. Now if we go back to our message application, when we use the voice to text option, now it has changed to my Google account. So you will notice that it does show your email on the screen. That's just to help learn about how you use voice to text and to improve it over time. Now, if I want to delete my message, I can just hold down the backspace right here. And then if I want to start a new message, I can just select right there and it will listen to me until I tap it to pause. And then here I can close voice to text, go back to my regular keyboard, tap that again to do voice to text. So then if you wanna take this a step further and let's say you're not super happy with the Samsung keyboard, you can change a few of the themes on here, but I like to use Google keyboard. So I'm gonna go into the Play Store and I'm going to search for Gboard. You could also search for the Google keyboard. Just install that. And then once it's installed, it will help run you through how you can add this to your phone. So the cool thing about Android is you can actually have all kinds of different applications or different keyboards on your phone and customize them to what you like. A bunch of them here like SwiftKey, a lot of others recommend, but I really like the Gboard application. All right, so here I'm going to open Gboard and then it says enable in settings. So we open this up, enable Gboard, select okay. Then we need to select it as our input method. So there we select Gboard. And then we need to set permissions, allowing Gboard to look up contacts for spelling and to be able to find them easily. And then we select done. And now in the Gboard settings, there's a few things I like to change. One, I like to change the theme. So here you could choose a certain color. You can choose a picture here, or you can even select your own picture if you want. So I like this blue keyboard right here. You can even have it show the keys in the background, select apply. Then I'm gonna go back here. I like under the preferences, I like to show the number row. I like to show the emoji switch key. Here I like to show the emojis in the keyboard. And then I like to have long press for symbols. So now we have added our Gboard back. Let's go back into the text messaging application. So now when I go into my keyboard, you'll notice it's changed to the Gboard and there I have my number row key, I have the items in the back, so if I long press, it will change that. If I want to go to my emoji keyboard, I just press the emoji down there. Now I really like the Gboard app because down here you have a few options where you can send different stickers. Your, it says you can set a Bitmoji. Here you have a bunch of different stickers. You have a search GIF option right there. You have old school emoticons right there 
and you just have your regular emoticons. But when I start typing, let's say I type pizza, it will search for that emoji right there. And if I'm in just normal text and I type pizza, it will show up as a recommended option. So those are some of the reasons I like G Word. You can also use the swipe keyboard like this. So I can run my fingers over. Samsung does have that. I just like how this works better. And then over here you have the voice to text option. So that is how you can change out your keyboard. And if you wanna go back at any time to the Samsung keyboard down here, you'll notice this keyboard in the very bottom right hand corner. Tap on that icon and then you can just choose Samsung keyboard and it takes you right back. So you can switch back and forth between the keyboards as well. Now by default, when you get a notification or a text message on your phone, it's gonna show a pop-up like this at the top of the screen. So I can instantly call, mark as read, or reply. So some people like that, but there's a setting where you can make it look a little more updated. So if we go into our settings here, we're gonna go into the display, and then we're gonna go to edge screen, and we're gonna turn on edge lighting. And I've done a full tutorial recently on how edge lighting works, but now if you receive a text message, this is what it will look like instead. So it gives you that notification around the outside and it pops up the message on screen, which looks pretty cool. So now we're gonna enable multi-window pop-up function. So if we go back into the settings, then we can go to advanced features and we are gonna go down and find the multi-window option. So here we can turn on the use recent button and turn on pop-up view action. So what this means is if you wanna pop up this window or whatever app you're in into a smaller screen, I just drag the corner of the screen and now it makes that window much smaller. And let's say I want to open up a second app on the screen, this use recent button. If I hold this down, now it's asking what is the second app I want to use at once. So now I can be looking at my settings and looking at my text message thread right there. Now one other cool thing that you can do with multi-window is if you press the recent apps button and you wanna pop up this message app, you long press, drag it right there into that box, and then it pops up that app onto the screen. So some pretty advanced stuff there, but one of my favorite things about the Samsung phones. Now the next option is called pin windows. This is a super important feature if you have any kids. So we're gonna go into the settings, go to biometrics and security, and then we're going to go down and go to other security settings. And down here at the bottom, you have pin windows. So if you tap on there, it will show you a few more things that you can do. So here it talks about that you could have it ask for your pattern before it unlocks, but let's show you how this works. So let's say I have an application that I want my kid to play but I don't want them to mess with anything else on my phone. So once I go into the app, I select the recent apps button down here, and then I scroll up a little bit, and now you have this pin icon. So if I select the pin, it says that it is going to keep on the screen unless somebody presses the recent apps button and the back button at the same time. So you have to hold those down. So if I select okay, my kid can now play in this application but once they hit home, it does not do anything. They can hit back, recent apps, they can mess with all of that and it won't leave this application. Once I take my phone back and I'm ready to use it, I hold down the recent apps and the back button and then it will unpin that. So if you have a child that can read, they would be able to undo that, but then you have it set where it won't unlock unless you put in your pattern. And then you can go back to your home screen. Now the last setting that I would set up when you get your phone is to set up your personal assistant. So there's two ways to do this. Over here, you have the Bixby button. So if you just hold down on this button, it will pop up Bixby and you can begin talking to Bixby and um, learn about what she can do. And the other option is using Google Assistant. And you can get to Google Assistant just by long pressing on the home button down here. So if I hold down the home button, it will go into Google Assistant. It will ask you to link your voice and everything. But once you have that ready, you can then begin using Google Assistant to set reminders, find you things on the internet, um, play sounds, all with your voice. So at any time you could just say, okay, Google, what is your favorite color? And even when you're not in the application, you can do that. You can, hey Google, set a reminder to bake a cake tomorrow afternoon. 
And I do have other Google Assistants around my house, the Google Assistant speaker, so they all connect together when I use my phone or the speaker. Now the last setting I adjust is to change my wallpaper on my lock screen to have a really cool video on it. You could also just use any picture, but with the new Samsung phones, you can actually choose a video to do that. Now I'll leave a link to a bunch of cool videos you can use below, but here if you go into the gallery, so now you just need to go through and find a video that you would like to use. So I'm gonna choose this one right here, select menu, set as wallpaper, and here it will show you what that is going to look like. I'm gonna select set as wallpaper. It does need to be 15 seconds. So you'd have to go in and edit it if it is over that. So now when I go to my lock screen, there you can see the video plays and it will time out after like 10 seconds or five seconds. But if you touch the screen or just slightly move it, you can watch the full video. So there you go. That is the top 10 settings that I would adjust on your new Samsung Galaxy phone. If you guys have any further questions about any of these, please let me know in the comments below and I can do a more in-depth tutorial on some of them. If you haven't transferred any of your info, make sure you select the playlist over on the side that will teach you how to use Smart Switch where you can get all the info from your old phone to your new phone. And if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.